Hey everybody, welcome to Technical Tired as Fuck Edition. I just started a new day job this week and I almost considered not making a video this week because man, I am fucked. But I decided, you know what? That's not fair to you guys. You pay good money to be here. That's not true. You don't pay shit to be here. But I'm a nice guy and I'm still going to show up and make you a video anyway. Anyway, this week's subject is going to be educational and it's going to be about something called the bathtub curve. What the fuck is the bathtub curve, you say? Why does it apply to me? Are you somehow implying that I'm a dirty, filthy pig? Stay tuned to find out. You guys know about the bell curve, right? It's a mathematical, graphical expression of the likelihood of outcomes in a given data set. I'm not really a math guy, but you know what I mean. The bathtub curve is very similar to the bell curve in that it's also a graphical mathematical expression but it's almost the direct inverse and as where the bell curve is shaped like a bell the bathtub is shaped like a bathtub now to us to us uh, pc geeks well the reason this matters and the reason why i'm making a video on it is because the bathtub curve is essential to understanding how the lifespan of electronics is calculated by manufacturers engineers and savvy consumers alike so basically in this application the bathtub curve is meant to measure the likelihood of a component failure over the course of its expected life under normal conditions <music> Now the bathtub curve is actually made up of three different data sets that are all combined together to come up with a general trend line. The first of these data sets is what is known as the infant mortality rate for electronics and it has nothing to do with dead babies. And as you can see from this curve, the incidence rate of infant mortality among electronic devices is highest when the object is first created and descends rapidly, largely as a result of the quality control process. And incidentally, this quality control cut that separates the usable chip from the unusable ones is actually a part of the binning process but that's another topic of discussion for a different video so what this means is the overwhelming majority of infant deaths in electronics occur long before they reach the consumer's hands the second element of the bathtub curve is generated from the general wear and tear of devices and the eventual death that they suffer from actually being used over the course of their long productive and happy lives as for why this happens it should be pretty self-explanatory Electronic devices use electricity, and while they depend upon electricity to work, they are also very sensitive to it. The heat and electrical stress that they endure eventually wears out their circuitry, their capacitors, resistors, and whatnot, and eventually the device ceases to function. Now you would think intuitively that this element of the curve would be a lot less steep than depicted here, but that's actually not the case because we've gotten particularly good at estimating the lifespan of electronics. Again, that's a topic of discussion for another video, but largely speaking, you have things like big data, electrolytic capacitors, and really intelligent engineers who are good at math to thank for that. And last, and certainly least, we have incidental or act of God failures, if you will. Now you might have noticed we don't actually need this part of the equation to make that nice bathtubby shape in the curve, but we include it anyway because sometimes shit just breaks. And sometimes this part of the equation also includes user error that results in a failure. Now if you're at or near the ends of one of the other two curves it's kind of hard to distinguish between the two which actually occurred so that's why this line sort of dips up at the ends a little bit but relatively speaking there's an equal opportunity for this type of failure to occur throughout the entire life of the electronic device and when you put all these three together you get yourself a nice pretty purple fuzzy bathtub <music> Now, as you all know, I do budget-oriented hardware videos. My intent is to save you money. And one of the reasons people end up spending more money on their computer than they need to is because they buy components before they have to, and sometimes they suffer the consequences of infant mortality as a result. Let me provide you with some specific examples. On one hand, RAM lasts forever, and as long as you're on the same form factor and same protocol, there's really no need to replace it unless you're looking for a speed upgrade. But nonetheless, when people build new systems, they often have a tendency to just buy new RAM with it, and it is absolutely ridiculous because the RAM you have could be perfectly good. When you couple that with the fact that the RAM quality control process is iffy at best, and the most likely time for a RAM module to fail is within the first few weeks of the end user having 
selling it, you get yourself a recipe for disaster that you could have easily avoided by keeping your fucking money in your pocket. And this is precisely why current generation secondhand RAM usually costs just about as much as what you would find at retail. And if we're being technical, because that secondhand RAM, granted you trust the source, has already been through end user quality control, so to speak, its reliability is actually higher than the stuff that you buy straight out of the package. And when you couple that with the fact that the usefulness window of RAM is actually significantly smaller than its actual physical lifespan, buying secondhand DDR4 these days is actually a better idea than buying it new. It's counterintuitive, I know, but the data does support it. And power supplies make an excellent second example. People have this misconception that power supplies that are near their end of life, where the primary capacitor might be near failure, is somehow going to explode their system once it fails. And that just isn't true. Modern power supplies built after 2009, more or less, are going to be built with adequate protections to protect your system against catastrophic component failure that will result from the power supply reaching the end of life. In other words, once something goes out of spec in your unit, it will safely shut down and preserve your computer. So basically, there is no reason to buy a new power supply every time you upgrade the rest of your core components. In fact, power supplies these days, especially with their seven to ten year warranties, are intended to survive several builds into the future and you should not be replacing it at every given opportunity. Now speaking to the infant mortality rate of power supplies, I would say between 2 and 3% are what most companies publish and then you have to factor in the units that don't get returned because people are lazy, have more money than brains, or just don't bother. All in all, once again, as long as you're still well within that warranty period, which by the way is a good indicator as to how long that company thinks their power supply is going to last, you have no reason to worry. So the long and the short of it is this. If you don't have a visible, measurable benefit to buying a new component, such as a processor or a graphics card, or even the speed you get from a new NVMe SSD, or from faster clocked RAM with lower latencies, there's no need to replace anything just because you're replacing a lot of other stuff. In other words, don't let a fear of failure stop you from trying. <laughs> Gross. Anyhow, for reasons I haven't bothered to research, I know I'm supposed to make these 10 minutes long, but it looks like we're done. And it wasn't intentional because of my state of exhaustion. I just genuinely am finished talking about the point I'd planned to talk about. Anyhow, as I discussed in my last video, I think it was, the secondhand buyer's market's a little dry right now, but I did manage to pick up an old X79 motherboard and a Sandy Bridge 6 core. So we're going to be playing with that a bit next week. I hope to have a build finished by then for you. Anyhow, thanks again for watching. Follow me on Twitter at Ofa and uh...